another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, my co-host is Bricky, and before today's episode gets started, if you would like to support us on Patreon, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. You can get access to our Discord, uh, some fine, fine HD posters. Uh, there's a new one, which I think it will be above expectations, because it's a, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Because well, we are anyway. we are equal opportunity people here. <laughs> equal opportunity, yeah. You know, we gotta get some we gotta get some eye candy for the females. Anyway, uh, patreon.com slash adeptus ridiculous, get a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. It's pretty great. Uh Bricky, where can these fine, fine folks find some fine, fine adeptus ridiculous merchandise? You know, DK, I must say, you said you gotta give a little something to the females. As if there aren't a whole lot of gay men who are like, damn, that's a good poster. I need oh you to rescind rescind your comment before we are canceled. You you say that, and I'm just like, why didn't I why didn't I think of that? Exactly. <laughs> I rescind though. There are plenty it's it's for males and females. Or Excellent. Whatever you identify as. As a man who has seen a large amount of gay pornography, there is nothing more attractive than a fit gay man. I'm <laughs> not sure how to process that, but hey, look, whatever floats your boat, I'm not here to judge. Do you? Do you? The, um, uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, merchandise. Uh, Orchidate.com. <laughs> Check out Orchidate.com or the description of this video for a Dead Ridiculous merch. Short sleeves, long sleeve, hoodies, stickers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Also, dice are on their way. Don't have an ETA. I'm so sorry, but that's just the way it works. And book club will be this week. So Ooh. make sure, like in a couple of days from this video going live, so make sure you finish the Void Stalker. Mm. Exciting, exciting. It's a very interesting finale. Yep. And it is I have, very uh, fun. We, have oof, we have things to talk about uh, for the next book club. Oh, oof, we do. We, oh, boy. What a um, twist. There's, there's some good stuff there. So, unfortunately, you already know this episode because I accidentally spoiled it. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's... I, I, I don't know which one. I have one of two options, but yeah. I, yeah. No, you know which one it is. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's Perturabo time. Hey, petulant hey. I'm finally going to learn about his his petulantness. That's sure a, word. a word. I'm sure there's a better word for that, but eh. it probably is. Perturabo, yeah. Primarch of the Iron Warriors, Ooh. Chaos Space Marine Legion. Hey, hey, all right. Uh, so, in the preparation for this episode, I read Hammer of Olympia, the oh. Primarch Primarch book on Perturabo. Um, if oh. I'm not mistaken. It was actually done by Guy Haley. Yes, Guy Haley, who I think actually did the Conrad Kurz book as well. Yep, oh, he so did. He's, he's a big fan of writing chaos. I think he may have done the Alpharius book too. He Forget has it. done plenty of books. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of them, and the one, like I said, was uh, Perturabo, Hammer of Olympia is the name of it. And I must say... Remember for a, a while I was like, you know, it's pretty cool when 40k takes culture and <laughs> and mixes it with other stuff, right? Like, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I and now I'm realizing that half of it's just fucking Greek. <laughs> yeah, there there's a lot of Greek. I mean, Hammer of Olympia, that's you don't get a whole lot much more Greek than that. It sounds like uh, the book portrays Perturabo as like fucking Zeus or something. Um, it's so. it's certainly interesting. He's literally on the planet Olympia, oh. and and they they wear like <sighs> togas. They, they, Please tell me they wear togas. I think they I think they do. I think because yes! they they drink they drink wine, and oh. they're they're really like yeah yeah kind of yeah. sorta okay uh, okay yeah. So they so they just ripped off the Greeks for Olympia. They 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 couldn't even think of a better name for the planet than Olympia. Like, it's literally it's literally Olympia. <laughs> Though I will admit, Perturabo, uh, like for instance, here is a picture of him when he's on Olympia. He's kind of a Giga Chad, the way he looks. Whoa. 
oh my god, it's a Perturabo spread instead of uh, the Necron spread. That's he's totally doing the the Trazen spread thing that we yeah, made on he's a less, while ago. He's less smug about it though. That's a big difference. I so, suppose. but but yes, he is a he is an enormous Greek like Olympian champion. That's that's his oh, yeah. shtick. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, how do I start with this man? Oh, no. oh my god. Oh, okay. So, 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 so. Okay, okay. So, so, Out of so, the so. Primarch books I've read, Kurz, Alpharius, and Perturabo, mm -hmm. um, I think my favorites go Kurz, Perturabo, Alpharius. Um, now, I'm obviously very biased on the Kurz one. Yep, you're a big Night Lord No doubt about now, that. I'm so, a big yeah. Night Lord guy. Uh, however, I do think it was the best written of the three. Okay. Uh, pers personally, uh, they were. I think they were all voiced by Jonathan Keeble. I think they were all voiced by him, who is a phenomenal audiobook VA. He is really good. Um, the thing is, is that out of all the three books, I, I think Alpharius' book is like fine. It's not amazing, but it's fine. It's got um, that twist. The, it's got a twist, pretty good. Uh, but the Perturabo book, I think, is better as a book. Uh huh. I do not like this man. <laughs> I was constantly thinking to myself, okay, <laughs> petulant man child, petulant man child memes, right? And I yeah. thought, okay, I'm finally gonna read it and see that I was wrong. <laughs> I'm I'm not. You were wow. Just, your convictions were strengthened. I, am... I, I was gonna say, like, how could you go and I'll, I'll like cause every time we mention him, you're just like, oh, he's a petulant man child. He's a fucking idiot. Well, not that he's an idiot, but you didn't really paint him in a great light to begin. It would have taken a hell of a book and a hell of a story to to get you to be like, oh yeah, it's pretty pretty cool, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I found out that the, there's a lot of memes where it's like the Virgin Rogel Dorn, the Chad Percherabo Iron, because their their slogan is Iron Within, Iron Without, mm -hmm. right? The Iron Wars, Iron Iron Within, of body of mind of soul, Iron Without, because guns and armor, you know, like mm -hmm. that's their concept. And it turns out that Percherabo as a person is cool because he he gets shit done and he carried the Horus heresy on his fucking back. Like, oh, did he? Oh my god. Without him, that heresy would have been would have been as popular as like Le Merzerov's French Revolution, the student revolution. It oh. would have been, been that effective. This guy carried it on his back. Oh, but I well, was but oh my like god when, when we talked about the uh the Horus heresy I don't remember a lot of talk about Perturabo and the Iron Warriors I didn't um, know enough about them to really talk about them oh okay okay cool and, and also the heresy is covered in like 20 books we had to yeah yeah to shorten it down just a little bit that's fair yeah I this guy though I Oh, um, okay, okay. <laughs> Flabbergast. Uh, how do I get, how do I talk about this man? I, I, I'm starting to think that there's a lot of, of Perturabo memes that I thought were people who actually liked him, but I think they were ironic. Like, like the, sig oh. the, the like the Sigma male memes. Sigma uh -huh. male memes are meant to be ironic and, and they're always attributed to like psychopaths. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, like, um, Traxy Driver or Breaking Bad or whatever. Mm -hmm. Perturabo is is like he's like an incel oh is he i thought you were gonna say he was like actually unironically like really dope and like really cool and <laughs> no he, his he's personality he sucks his personality <laughs> sucks but he's really competent this this oh. guy this guy, okay within an hour and i mean within an hour of the book the first thing he does oh, not the first thing he does but it, it, within the first hour of the book, he has a debate with a priest about why God is cringe. <laughs> God is like <laughs> believing in God is cringe. Quote Perturabo M30. <laughs> he has a, does he really? 
He, well, just, he doesn't say the word cringe, but he well, actually no, like obviously, yeah. He has a long debate with because this is <laughs> Olympia, right? So there are priests and they believe in the gods, and he's like, "Why would you believe in something fake? That's so dumb, fucking cringe." <laughs> like, I'm not Based kidding. Based for Jirabo, let's go. I oh my goodness, <laughs> this. Okay, let me. Oh, okay, let me let me let me describe. What a guy. What, what let me a guess. Guy. His, let me get his history going, okay? So here's how it starts. So Percherabo lands on Olympia. And for the first five or so years of his life, uh, assumption, assumption don't, don't really know, he has no memory. Uh, yeah, but, and it, and it doesn't so, really matter. Well, all we care about is like when he kind of grows up and starts, you know, filling yeah. out his role as a, as a Primarch. So Olympia is very similar to you know, the Greek area. And, and they... Mm -hmm mainly have a ton of mountains, you know, mountains everywhere, and an absolute massive amount of, like, fortresses. Huge walls and spires, and, you know, because the Iron Warriors are very big into, into the siege craft and, and giant fortresses and buildings and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, eventually, at some point, when he was very young, like six or whatever age he was, he was just, like, climbing one of the walls. He's like, I'm gonna get in. <laughs> And then a bunch of Olympian guards were like, hey, get down from there. And so they took him down. And the, like these Olympian guards, they're like, they're like technologically advanced, but also not. Okay. Like they have swords and hammers, but they have like, like a steampunk, like lightning gun, kind of. Oh. So they have like maybe some guns and some tanks and things, but they're, they're not as far as we know them. If that makes any okay. sense. Are they, are they spacefaring yet? No, they're not spacefaring. Okay. Yeah. Um. So imagine like imagine like if the Greeks could create tanks with like steam, like steam powered Gre uh, Greek mythology. Steam it's it's kind of a cool. Greek sounds kind of cool actually. It's pretty dope actually. It's yeah. it's pretty cool. Uh, but imagine like a little more cleaner and a lot more like you know iron and gold and copper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be so, really cool. So he's taken to this city known as like uh, like like Lokos Lokos Lokos. That's the name of it, uh, Lokos. <laughs> and he's taken to the uh, what was the name of the the, the father? I the, the names you're on, are you're on your own here, but I, I know the names you. are the names are very Greek. Mm -hmm. It starts with a D. It's like uh, Dolokos or, or or like Dalakos or something like that. It's D Damakos. Uh, Damakos. Hey, we got it. There we go. Nice. Uh, so he was known as the tyrant of Locus, or Lo oh, Lo Locus, and uh, he was brought to Damakos, and he was like, "Ah, oh, yes, hello, uh, interesting. Uh, I, I would like to prove your worth, and yada yada." And they brought out like a forge immediately to him, and the first thing he does, he's like, "Huh, interesting," and then he immediately forges like the greatest sword of all time, and of it's course. like, "Wow, very good, very good. I will, I will, <laughs> I will have you as my son." Uh, Damo, like, uh, you are, whatever, foster son. Um, Hooray. But naturally, like, you know, they say, like, oh, this this came, this guy came from the sky, and then by the age of 12, he's, like, seven foot five. Uh, oh, you know, shit. it's like, oh, he, he's, because he's a Primarch. It's like, he yeah. was sent by Still. the gods. He was sent by the gods. And, and little six-year-old oh, Pertrabo is like, what are the gods? <laughs> what are, what are gods? Like, can you see the gods? Well, then they must not exist. Hmm. Curious. Y'all motherfucker like, stupid. Uh, so he kind of had he he kind of had this way about him, but mm -hmm. Percherabo growing up was inherently like like was untrusting, but he was also a little bit um damaged. So damaged. So Percherabo, a lot of all the Primarchs kind of have like a power, so to speak. Alpharius yeah. can kind of make himself not seen or like. Seem like a normal person. Conrad yeah, yeah. can see the future. You know, yada yada. Um, Perturabo has two afflictions, and they're not great. <laughs> one, of, one of them <laughs> is like an eidetic memory. He can basically what? understand and remember everything he's ever seen, ever. That sounds pretty cool. That sounds pretty oh, great. It's, oh, it's great. The second one is that he w has a constant haunting vision of the Eye of Terror at all times. Oh, that doesn't sound so great. No, yeah, that one doesn't sound good. No, mm -mm. he literally closes his eyes to go to sleep, and in the blackness of his closed eyes, he sees the maelstrom oh, forever. Boy. That's so he's uh, that's... constantly looking into the eye of terror. Oh boy, that, that 
That sounds like it'll fuck you up a little bit. That, that definitely sounds like an affliction that would maybe drive you to chaos a little bit. Just stir up your sanity a little bit. And, yep. Yep. I, uh, mm hmm. Mm hmm. I mean, he he certainly, not just Sandy, but it kind of feels like he's always being watched. Like every movement, oh. he is being judged and watched. Oh, boy. Yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll make you a paranoid Primark. Yep. I so, don't like that. Paranoid Primark? That sounds paranoid, like Paranoid Primark. That, that's uh. Perturabo. He also had a temper. Uh, Perturabo was the <laughs> kind of person who said very little, but when people would, would uh, ask him or like, hey, I don't... I don't know about this, or I don't think I don't think this is a good idea. He'd be like, <laughs> "What do you know?" <laughs> Snarf. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like grumbling and growling. Yeah. But uh, the thing about Perturabo, and this is the thing that's kind of sad, but is interesting, is that this this man's a fucking genius. Like he is in a complete and utter genius. He. Spends his time making we like weapons and, and, and like like upgrades and, and mm -hmm. buildings, and he constructs architectural plans, and he does all this like writing and stuff, and he makes things that are incredible. The problem is, is that he's on Olympia with, uh, as a foster son of the tyrant of Locos. Damakos is not like a his dad was not a bad guy. Well, he's a tyrant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was um, gonna say, how does how is a tyrant not really a bad guy but right he wasn't he wasn't a bad dad oh okay. so to speak it's just a bad um, leader <laughs> well no he was a well he's a good leader he's in a, terms of like olympia he's a tyrant oh, but okay. he like he led well oh, uh okay. the, the thing is is that he it was always war time it was always war oh. and, and 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 politics and assassinations and because yeah. that's the olympian that's a that's fucking greek right it's always yeah, war that's true I guess you so, kind of have to be a tyrant to survive any sort of uh, long-standing length of leadership. Right. So, Perturabo, his genius was always used for war. Better oh. tanks, better guns, better armor, better weapons. Mm -hmm. Perturabo hates war. Ironically. Oh. Oh. Perturabo <laughs> does not like war. He does not enjoy it. He enjoys building like a bathhouse and like upgrading an aqueduct system and assisting in in like plumbing and, and bettering the people oh really he <laughs> he wants to make like amphitheaters and, and and create things that help the people of the city that and, but, was not and, what I was expecting from Pastor I Abel. know. <laughs> he does not like war, but he's also a spiteful prick. So when he's <laughs> constantly been told to do war, he he does he literally does this. He goes, fine, I guess I'll fight all the wars then. And then he goes <laughs> and he does a shitload of war. Oh. Yeah, I'm 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 a little taken aback. Uh, cause I mean, you know, talking about a Primark. Uh, I I just naturally thought he'd be he'd be all about war and conquering and killing and and uh, for the empire uh, type of stuff and just love making weapons and just love ma it's boy that's a <laughs> that's that's a that's a strange primark. If he did bathhouse dead. If he did, then it came later. Because at the time, he had mm -hmm. all these plans, all of these ideas, and his foster father didn't really care. Huh. And that's the, th but the thing is, is that his foster father legitimately loved him. He cared yeah. a ton for him. And, but, but naturally, he was almost like a trophy. It was like, you know, it's like, come uh... see my foster son who can best any of your warriors and paint a perfect painting in 10 minutes. And, and he would use uh... that as a way to kind of like bargain peace with other nations, you know? Yeah. Like, we're going to meet and look at the, the prowess of my foster son. K the, the gift from the gods and the heavens and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, so He's sounding like a worse and worse dad as we uh, as we go on. But it's like it's like a combination of like this is the Olympian way. It's all he knows. Mm -hmm. This is the traditions and the culture that they express. Yeah. Whereas you know where he still probably cares a lot for Perturabo, but he's just not what Perturabo wants as a father. 
because uh, Demikos had two other sons and a daughter. Uh, the two sons did not really like him very much. Uh, Percherabo, that is. Uh, but the daughter <laughs> and Percherabo were actually kind of chill. Oh, yeah? Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Caliphony, I think, was her name? Because of, you know, Greek. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was going to say, I, I, I get the two sons not liking Percherabo because uh, kind of hard to live in that shadow of a, you know, of a Primarch. Uh, yes, a, a, a brother. Primarch. It's like, why can't you be like your brother Percherabo? What the fuck, man? What, you want me to be eight feet tall and, and, and fist fight tanks? Yeah, he was taller and bigger at me at six than I was at 25. This is bullshit. The, um, so, <laughs> uh, so Percherabo naturally was always a little spiteful and quiet and annoyed. Um, okay. because of the, of the way he was, he was being treated. <sighs> okay. I know you haven't seen So he seen pouted a lot? Is that, is that, is that it? He, he was, oh he's... my God, did he pout. <laughs> okay. Have you ever, all right. All right. Have okay, you get your ever bingo cards seen, ready. <laughs> have you ever, I, I have not seen this film, uh, okay. but are you familiar with the YouTube channel folding ideas? I am not. Okay. There, there's a, a, a guy there and he. I don't. I don't remember his name. The the, the YouTube guy name. Ah, damn it. Um, <laughs> Dan. His name is Dan. Okay. Um, and he reviewed this movie called The Book of Henry. And the oh. Book of Henry is a, one of those books where it's like a kid who kind of might have like maybe like a slight, maybe like slightly autistic, something like that. But he's incredibly smart, and the kid is like 11 years old and plays like the stock market and knows more than all of his teachers, so he doesn't bother to pay attention in class. And he's like trying to boss around the mom, is like trying to do all this stuff, and, and the kid's always right, and he has this smug sense of superiority and all that kind of stuff. And the, and this Henry Kim is Percherabo. I swear to Christ. <laughs> Percherabo literally, and I am not shitting you, lives... On the top of a spire, 15 floors up, which is oh. basically him living in an attic. Surround yeah, and he spends his entire time in this room by himself, not wanting to talk to other people with his drawings and schematics. And when his dad comes in, he doesn't acknowledge his dad's presence. <laughs> and he's like, and, and I, I shit you not. And a literal <laughs> quote from the book is, you've never understood me. I'm not, not fake, fucking shitting Dad. you. It's I'm not, not shitting you. He literally <laughs> says, you've never understood me. All you use me for is war. And I want to build this. And he grabs like papers and this and this. And oh my God. And this it's is after fake, his Dad. hour. This is after his hour long debate about why God is cringe. <laughs> he, he, he sounds kind of emo. He he's, is. You know? he, he's. He, oh, he spends his entire time spiteful and angry, but also quiet, literally up in his attic, drawing shit and, and, and angry that no one, can, no one can understand him because all of them are blind by their faith in the gods. <laughs> do you, you know what's the worst? atheist, too. Do you know so. what's the worst part about this son of a bitch? He, he's, li he's literally Ben Shapiro. <laughs> I, I am, I'm not kidding when I say... He said something on the lines of the only thing I believe in is the truth of men and the and logic. Oh. And it's like wow. facts and logic. Damn. So he's a Vulcan too. Oh, you don't get the fact you don't get the facts and logic meme. Oh shit. No, I don't. Sorry. Oh, I, I'm okay. under a rock. He, it's gotta be it's he, gotta be like anime or something super weeby or you know. I, I, yeah. He, he okay, well he pretty much said the words facts and logic, which I'm sure our fans will understand more. Okay. Like, it, oh, is it, how? Oh my goodness! <laughs> Believing in God is cringe. Uh, ben Percherabo, turning point, fucking Terra. <laughs> the amount of befuddlement that you have while talking about him is great. By the way, <laughs> just moments of oh, j God, j I don't. J how do I? God. I know. <laughs> the, sh <laughs> should, I, should I put this in the in the chat? And she is so she's so correct. Percherabo, like, quote, Percherabo basically has that toxic masculinity self-martyr thing where complaining is for bitches. So if dad tells him to do something he hates, he does it and quietly sees and hates everybody. That is oh. a perfect example. 
he's constantly angry because he's constantly doing things he doesn't want to do because he doesn't because he thinks that complaining or saying no is dumb. Wow. Oh but my the, god. But the whole time he he could have absolutely just been like, nah, don't feel like it, and then just ransacked the whole fucking place. He could oh, have. Oh, he easily. But he absolutely could have. Like he didn't have to stand for that if he didn't want to. That's the concept, though, Perch Rob. Like, eventually, after enough time and, and effort, he basically ends up, cr like, upgrading all of the ornaments, and he says to himself, all right, if I'm going to have peace and no more war and get rid of all war, I'm going to have to pe have peace through iron. So he basically went around, like, taking over all the areas of the planet. Right. And basically, like, trying to, you know, put them all under one rule, so no more right. war. Yep. If, if you conquer the entire planet and the entire planet is under your rule, you're not going to go to war with yourself. Yeah, and, and, and then also... And draw and make aqueducts and, and he can He can make fun little... Fun little yeah, he's going to draw yeah. his little theater and he's going to build his fun little hut and he's going to be happy. Yay! He, he, this man just wants to sit in his room and draw up how to make buildings. That's literally what this guy wants to do. Aw. And that, that's, that's almost, like, tragically sad. That like perch rubble, all he wants to do is draw and help the people, and I can already see uh, that's not gonna happen. And tragically, he is going to fall to chaos and just never ever be at peace and never get to just do his happy little doodles and build his happy little buildings. Exactly, because <sighs> after he went around and attempted to, you know, get the entire planet under the same same rule. But, but mm -hmm. just for an example of his temper, there was an assassination attempt on his sister and him. Ooh. And naturally, they shanked him with a bunch of poison blades that did jack all. But he, he got the guy, uh, or he, he like kicked the guy so hard it snapped his femur backwards. And he Ooh. was still alive, and he was like crawling away. And he went to him, and he started like choking him. And he's like, who sent you all this kinds of stuff? And he was like in such a blind rage, his sister was like, stop, stop. Save him for like the torturers. We'll get like, we'll get information later. And Perch Rabble, like, just was in such a blind rage, his fingers dug into the dude's neck and grabbed his spine. And just, like, snapped it. And he was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> My bad. Darn, <laughs> I was gonna damn. kill you anyway, but oops, sorry. Twisted your spine inside of you. Hate it when that I'm happens. Gonna, gonna, gonna put it in the skull of Progenium wall. Gonna <laughs> snap it like a Slim Jim. <laughs> oh, yeah, brother. <laughs> So, eventually, <laughs> the entire time, Pertrabo was constantly, like, again with this, he had a lot of, like, you're not my real dad. My, mm -hmm. like, I am not from the gods, because that is illogical and is dumb and cringe. Yeah. <laughs> I was, obviously, I have a real dad out there, and one day he'll come and help me. And Oof. one day he did. Oh, no. Poor Pertrabo. <laughs> well, no, so in the beginning, he was pleased <clears throat> with this. Oh, in the beginning, okay. he was pleased because this entire time he's like, I'm not from the gods, I'm not from the gods, I'm not from the gods, gods are cringe. Um, and finally, his dad arrives and he's like, I'm here for you, my son. He's like, I knew it! I knew it the <laughs> whole time! Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> the gods are cringe, I told you! And Biggie's like, yeah, gods are pretty fucking cringe, aren't they? You shouldn't believe in them. I'm not one. Yeah, gods are cringe. Yeah. So naturally, he gets he finally gets arrived by by Big E. He found founds the Iron Warriors Legion, uh, which of <laughs> course Iron within, Iron without. Yeah. I believe they are the ninth. Yeah, ninth legion. I I bet that made Perch Rabo super happy. He's like, yes, I'm not from the gods. Fuck this planet. Fuck war. Ah, my real dad's here. I can finally do it. What's that? Iron Warrior. Oh. I got, I got, I got to do more war. Shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in fact, he got even the worst end of the deal. So oh, no. <laughs> no. So, do you remember who Perch Rabo's most hated rival was? Ooh, I know you've talked about it, and I, I already forget. The only person I think of now when you say Perch Rabo is Vulcan because Vulcan got uh, thrown into Perch Rabo's crazy ass maze by Kurz. Uh, no, that was more Kurz wanting to be a douche. Yeah, um, yeah. No, that would be our good illiterate friend, Rogel Dorn. 
our good illiterate friend. <laughs> so, so Rogel Dorn and, and Percherabo are very similar in their mannerisms. I was They're gonna both... say they sound super similar in like logistics, following the rules, and I I, I would actually think they kind of get along. You would think that. Yeah. Uh, the problem is that both of them are are so similar in the sense that like they don't they don't talk much at all. They're very quiet people. Mm -hmm. uh, they both are distrusting. They're both incredibly blunt and hate when people. Uh, like, um, fight back or, or, or question them. And oh. they also, and once they get into an argument, they will not let it go. Oh. And they won't, and they won't <laughs> back down. And so when the two of them are talking together and they have that same trait. Yeah, that probably does get pretty heated, actually. The thing um, is, hmm. is that the emperor had to choose someone to not go to war but build the Imperial Palace on Terra. Oh, the giant no. golden palace. Yeah. Build a fortress. Yeah, and let me let me take a wild stab at this. He does not pick Percherabo. He does not. He picks oh. Rogel Dorn. Oh boy. Oh boy. And, <laughs> this, like, he's so Percher bad at his job. <laughs> Percherabo. <laughs> Percherabo went to Mars to learn shit. I don't remember what. And because of his memory, he basically learned everything Mars has to offer in maybe a couple days. And Whoa. the fact that's the he's actually got this weird curse where he he's so intelligent and he picks things up so fast that the concept of understanding to him, like like of of that fun excitement of learning new knowledge, can't really exist. Yeah, he he, he wants instant. to learn. Yeah, he wants to learn. He wants to learn new stuff. He loves the idea of discovery, but he learns too fast and he gets it too quick that the concept yeah. of knowledge and learning is like lost on him. So he's constantly wanting to learn, but he can't because he's too smart. That's or, that's kind of insane to think about that. He learned everything a planet like because at the time, isn't Mars like all Adeptus Mechanicus shit, too? Uh, yeah, it was the cult mechanic, which he also hates them because they believe in a god. Sure. But, like, to learn everything a planet has to offer in days? Holy I mean, shit. I mean, I don't <laughs> know if it was everything the planet had to offer, but it was, like... A lot. A lot of stuff, yeah. Damn. Um, and Dorn took, like, a week to get the basics. Which, it's the basics of Mars, so, you yeah. know. That's still pretty fucking quick. <laughs> yeah, but so Percherau was like, this this guy's a he can't even read, you know, like what a nincompoop. <laughs> and you're and and I've ne read. I'm sick of war. I don't want to do war. I hate war. I just want to build. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna build the Imperial Palace? Dorn. Oh boy. And so what did the Emperor do instead? He gave Percherabo probably some of like the shit jobs. He gave oh, him like, no. <laughs> like go quell this rebellion on this planet of like elderly men or something. Oh. Like, go go deal with this other rebellion that barely matters. Go go check out this planet, see if they're okay. And the worst offender was a war against a, another alien species called the Harud. The Harud. That is where the resentment really came in. Um, so this is told in the book a lot. The Harud are a, are a Xenos race, uh -huh. one that you don't quite know. They they uh, I posted a picture. Ew! Um, they're they like... got giant black eyes and mandibles, and they're very moist. Uh, I was gonna say it looks like uh, if Sasquatch was covered in raw sewage. That's a very good way to put it. Yeah, uh, the thing about like the Harud is that they actually distort time. They Ooh. have time acceleration fields around their bodies and their ships. Oh. And this can increase and decrease due to concentration of them. So when the Imperial Guard or whatever was sent over there, 
the if they were in prox close proximity of the Harud, they would age to become elderly and then it turn into bones and dust in like like 20 minutes or less sometimes Ooh. in like 20 seconds so you got a long range him like you can't get up close and personal but that doesn't even work very well because they're off they often look like shimmers of heat because they distort time around their bodies oh. it took it took them like a, a a while like months to even see a normal harud the one you're seeing right now to actually see the the body for its for what it is oh boy that's that sounds like a bitch to fight so even the space marines like they don't age to an extent but they were aging thousands to tens of thousands of years in the presence Damn. of the harud and so their armor like the ceramite would rust mm -hmm. and 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 crumble and their bolters would like break under exposure so if you tried to shoot a harud would it not go through because like in the field the bullet would just decompose um not always sometimes volume of fire and all that <clears throat> yeah uh, but sometimes they were able to shoot them perfectly fine but you know sometimes not the herod's yeah. weird time Very distortion weird. all this stuff they fought this war and they lost like uncountable casualties yeah, to the herod like laughable amounts of cash oh my god i forgot something about percherabo what's that i forgot about the decimation Oh no. Oh, oh boy. The decimation you say. Whew. So think of a dad. Think of a dad <laughs> that's like like the, the dad that. is really, really harsh on their son. They're really mean and kind of awful, but it's not that they don't love their son. It's more that they just want they wish they were better. They want mm -hmm. them to be better, you know? Okay. Perturabo found his new legion when he was brought to them after uh he was picked up. Yep. And he found them lacking. He was like, you guys suck. Uh-oh. <laughs> and so what you're going to do is nine of you are going to fucking beat to death the 10th. And he forced oh. his entire legion to kill one tenth of the entire legion. Oh, oh. <clears throat> well, that's that's uh, that's a lot. Yep. That uh, I, no wonder they call it the decimation. That's um. It's a fitting name. It's um appropriate. Um, yes. Yeah. It was just <laughs> like, hmm, I don't like you guys are kind of shit. I'm going to have you all like die. And I mean, like, yeah, Roman soldiers did that. But oh, did they? I didn't know that Roman soldiers did that. I think it was too. I don't know if it was like super common, but I think they did do that to an extent. Yeah. Point being, though, I'm is that like it's still he was just like, man, you guys aren't quite good enough die <laughs> kill well, i only want the best of the best uh that does sound like a very 40k thing to do though that sounds like something that uh it probably in 40k frequently happened in all the chapters it sounds really similar to what angron did it's almost like identical in a weird way i thought he also did one out of 10 if they didn't conquer a world in like 30 something hours oh yeah yeah angron did do that there was a time yeah. limit and if you didn't fill out the time limit for conquering the world just at least you had a chance, though. It sounds like Per Traub was just like, yeah, that one-tenth, bitches, yeah. kill him. He just, he just came in there, and he's like, I don't like you guys, and he just killed them. Like, when he yeah. first came to his legion. At least Angron, you had a chance. There was at least like, okay, at least if I do this, I'm okay. Per Traub was just like, nah, I don't like you. Yeah, Per Traub, man, that man's spiteful. Um, yeah, so anyway, yeah. he was constantly fighting this Harud group, right? His men were dying by the, like, by tons. Tons of men were dying. And Prince Rabo really doesn't give a shit about, <laughs> the, about like, he, I think Prince Rabo has the most friendly fire out of any Primarch. Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe, Ang maybe Angron, but wow. Like... They often the the uh, Iron Warriors just open up their gunfire into like a crowd, and there's his own troops. And I I think there was a meme I saw a while ago, which was Ah, this guy's got it! Stop <laughs> shooting! You're hitting our troops," said the word bearer. Lol, said the Iron Warrior. <laughs> Lamau. <laughs> they Damn. they are they have so much friendly fire, um, but because they just after, don't care, or because because it's the it's just necessary. 
you know, uh, the necessary yachty. sacrifice. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay. So after this, like year to two year long campaign, I think it was a long time of them find the Harud. Eventually, the Harud set off some kind of weird entropic bomb and vanished. Oh. Just vanished, along with a large majority of the planet, or maybe even the planet in its oh. own right. They may have taken the planet with them. And the oh. Iron War, wow. like a large amount of the Iron Warrior's fleet. Oh. And their time distortion abilities were so crazy, they moved the sun into like Red Giant phase. Whoa. <laughs> that, yeah, okay. Um, I The Harad sound, I don't, I don't want to fight them. Ever. I don't they actually, I don't, they actually really. might be the most powerful non-normal Xenos race I can think of. I can't think yeah. of another Xenos race that was that powerful. They were nuts. The the, the like the Iron Wars couldn't beat them. Like, they, they were trying hard. Yeah, they they yeah. kind of. I mean, the Harad left, so I think they were retre they retreated, but eh, they set they off this bored, bomb right? with it. That's <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, but this is the point in time where Perturab was like, I could be using building blocks at home and i've been sent to do jack all bullshit and then fight this group for so long and nothing even worked my ships are dead my men are dead there's no good end this is your fault emperor this is your bull this is your vanity which is yeah. horrendously hypocritical yeah Sound, it sounds like Perturabo just needs to take a vacation to Legoland or something. Like, I bet I bet Perturabo would love to play with a nice Lego set or something. Like, you know? Just to, you get bored just of relax, it too quickly. Dude. That's true, probably. He, he should play, play with, like, Lincoln Locks. I but was like, about to say the meme should be Perturabo sitting in his room building with Lincoln Logs. <laughs> but, but he doesn't have, like, just some Lincoln Logs. He has, like, 40,000 Lincoln Logs. He has this giant <laughs> pile of sticks next to him, and he's just, like... Put it like just keeps on adding. It's like this structure is not supported enough. And he just punches it and then he starts over. <laughs> starts all over again. Yeah. Um, God, which why you know, is Biggie it, such a bad like? It's so obvious what you should like. Wh why? Why would you? Why would you not send Perturabo to build the palace? Why? That's what he wants. Okay. Like okay, what the so, hell? So you know how. Biggie, or you know how there's like the concept of of the future and, and seeing into the warp and seeing the future. There's the assumption that the emperor knew that his sons would betray him at some point. Okay. And by treating the chaos primarchs like shit, he was more so attempting to lessen their power and not give them the important stuff so that they wouldn't have a, a ground to stand on if they did. Oh, isn't that all there, the problem with seeing the future, though, in like, yes, uh, in media? It's like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm totally going to prevent this from happening. But it's because you saw the future and because you tried to prevent it that you actually made it happen. Again, this is an assumption I'm making. I don't know. But, you know, get purchased. Like, like, if you think about it, Dorn's Palace did a pretty good job. Yeah, Perturabas would have been better, though. Uh, actually, I really don't know. They both would probably make some pretty good palaces. Uh, okay, but at least um, at least Rogel Dorn wouldn't have turned chaos on you if you didn't give him the building job. I, I probably, but it's like Perturabo say like he's like, oh, my men were thrown away for no good reason. It's pretty oh, yeah, fucking that's... hypocritical for <laughs> when he just killed like a tenth of them. <laughs> for for the Iron Warrior Primarch to say that is yeah, that's a little. So there's a moment Perturabo did that I thought was really cool but funny. So Purdy was friends, friends ironically with two people, Ferris Manus and Fulgrim. Do you just call him Purdy? Yeah, Purdy. <laughs> just gonna throw that out there out of nowhere, huh? Just his call sister him called. <laughs> his sister called him Bo. <laughs> did she really? Perturabo. Hey, hey, I know, but. He, he didn't like Perch. it very much, but it, he liked his sister, so it was okay. For some reason, when you said uh, uh, Purdy, all I could think of was uh, uh, was it was it uh, Purdy was the Dalmatian from 101 Dalmatians? Now I just I imagine him in bleached white armor with just black dots on it. Just Polka dot down. man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do I do not know about that, but I get you. 
Okay. Um, so, basically, I, I don't I know the name of the 101 Dalmatians. I've seen 101 Dalmatians, damn it. It's a long time ago. I'm not, I'm, I'm not that young. Yeah. But, but. Um, so, he was actually friends with Ferris Manus and Fulgrim a decent amount. Uh, I'm actually shocked that he was a fan of Fulgrim. I think maybe he liked Fulgrim really? for his... Well, because Fulgrim was liked by a couple, like a decent amount of people, but Fulgrim, like he's also Greek, kind of, and he also has like really impressive stuff he builds, and and he's got quite quite the drip. Um, That's true. Fulgrim does have the drip. That's fair. But Fulgrim is like an insufferable, egotistical ass. <laughs> like he's so full of himself. So I thought that Perch Trouble would fucking hate him, but maybe he just kind of yeah. likes him because like Homeworld misses home. And then Ferris Manus, but I don't know anything about Ferris because Iron Hands, Lamau. Um, goodbye, okay. Ferris. Uh, All right, cool, cool. Yeah, like if, if Fulgrim, I guess, like art, he like art, he like art and painting and, and Pertrabo like that too because he doesn't like war. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but they were kind of buds for a bit. Um, okay. A after the after the Harud War, actually, there's this one part. Where, where Pertrabo and Fulgrim, he's like mad at Fulgrim for something. I don't remember what. Mm -hmm. And so Pertrabo has like a board, and he literally has like 40k minis on that board because he's using them as like tactical, you know, he's like moving around like a tactical oh, board. Yeah, like yeah, ta yeah. You know? And he's got like titans and stuff there, and he's got little things around. And and he's like, fe like Ferris, or not Ferris, uh, Fulgrim. I guess, I guess Fulgrim did something. Kind of douche. He like left his left Iron Warrior soldiers alone and like fled or something. I forget what he did, but he's like, "Come here, Fulgrim. I need to show you something." And then Fulgrim's like, "I don't want to see your damn toys, pretty." And he's like, "Just, hu just humor me." And so Fulgrim's like, "All right." With like a huff, he comes down, sits down next to Percherabo, and he sees like a little model Warhound Titan or something on the thing, right? Mm. Percherabo looks at Fulgrim. And grabs the back of his head and slams it into the fucking Titan mini. <laughs> oh! <laughs> kind of like the Joker with the pencil. He's just like, yeah. now listen here. Well, bam! Damn. And he's like, that's what you get, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Whoa. All right, I'm starting to like Perch Rabo a little bit more now. Because uh, that <laughs> sounds like a real... <laughs> yeah, I will make this Titan disappear. Ta-da! It's gone. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's kind of a Chad move. To be fair, that's it's like it's like it literally in quote. Pertrabo's hand flashed out and gripped Fulgrim's hair. With sudden force, he slammed his brother's face into the Warhound. The wondrous automaton shattered into thousands of pieces as Fulgrim's head crunched into the pitted surface of the workshop. Damn, what a what a boss thing to do. Uh, and to another Primarch, no, nonetheless, like the Fulgrim just. That's, well, here's kind of dope. Here's like here's like the the excerpt. Um, it says, Fulgrim's perfect face was a wet meat wound, wound leaking blood, <laughs> snot, and tears. His Aww. breath was hoarse and clogged with phlegm and broken teeth. His eyes were swollen shut. He tried to speak, but Pertrabo cut him off again. No, brother, I am speaking now, and you will listen to me. And he says, I have, bitten my, I have bitten my tongue and allowed you to bring my legion into this place. I have followed your lead in all things. I have listened to your tall tales and allowed you to set the pace of this expedition. That ends now. Your warriors have no discipline. <laughs> Monsters fight your battles, and you have allowed an entire vessel to be sacrificed in the name of vanity, but no more. From here onwards, I am in charge, and for the duration of this mission, your legion is mine to command. Your warriors will obey my orders. They will follow my lead, and they will do nothing except my command. If you agree to that, then we will continue on into the Eye of Terror and finish this together. And this is like during heresy time. If yeah. you don't, then I will take my legion and leave you here. Do you understand? Ooh, and, damn. And it's like, Ful Fulgrim nodded and swallowed a mouthful of blood. It's like, I understand, brother. His voice, a, a gargle mangled mockery. I understand that you humbled me and expect me to swallow my pride to be your lap dog. It's like, I don't need a damn lap dog, snarled Percherabo. I need an equal. So, but I am not your equal, brother, said Fulgrim, grinning through his bloodied features. I surpass you in every way. And Perch oh, says, no. and yet I am the one holding the hammer. Ooh, damn. What a... The more I'm hearing... 
It's it's kind of sounds like he was a petulant man child, like on um, Olympia a little bit, but it he's sounds still like kind of petulant. He, kind of, but he sounds like kind of a badass though. Like that's he, the, that's kinda, the he thing. gets shit done. Like he seems much less petulant once Big E's gotten a hold of him and and put him in the the Iron Warriors. That's the problem with him is that he's so fucking good at his job. And he's con he's constantly right very often, but he's such a douchebag and he's so <laughs> petulant and cringe lord that it makes you hate him. His personality sucks. But god damn does he know what he's doing? Yep. That's the difficulty. Because on one hand, he's Lamau, God is cringe, Perturabo, uh M and M30, but at the same time, he's he fully gets things done. Like, we'll talk about the Iron Warriors themselves next episode, because that's yeah. what we do now. Like, the Iron Warriors, dude, they are badasses. Okay. I am floored how cool they are. A small example. Um, they they make those, like, demon engines, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then did, did I tell you that they lure demons into the engines and then trap them inside and use them as fodder? Uh, I, I I vaguely remember that. Yes. Yeah. They they want they actually have a, a thing called the obliterator virus, where <laughs> they um it's a virus that kind of like contorts you into like this big hulking mass and you just like sprout guns out of your fucking body. Oh. Um, it's it's Gross. weird. That's actually a, that's actually a tabletop mini, the obliterator. It's pretty cool. Okay. Um, but the Iron Warriors have a shitload of them, and they actually infected a Tyranid ship with the obliterator virus. Oh, and now, shit. And now the Tyranid ship they, they used in combat, and it would birth little mini titans. Oh, it would, shit. It would, it would birth titans and just send them to the atmosphere and start attacking things with little titans made from a Tyranid ship. Whoa, what is that called? Is that, I, that That's not a mini, is it? But that's that sounds dope as... What? <laughs> uh, the Obliterator what? Virus ship. Where is this thing? Fuck. That sounds uh, so crazy. It's in the book Storm of Iron. Ah, oh, crap. I forget how it is. Uh, Tyranid Iron Warriors? Sure. Well, Tyranid Iron Warrior, and you should probably put Obliterator in a search. Right? Yeah, the Obliterator thing. Um, I don't know the name of the vessel exactly, but... Uh, that yeah, it's really, it's really, really... That mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd love it's to see. It's super a fucking of it. cool. It's super cool. I uh, I can't remember the name exactly of it or anything, but it was in the book Storm of Iron, and, and yeah, but like they they do shit like this, and it's really dope. Uh, like hell, uh, full, or Perturabo was the only one who didn't use like melee combat pre heresy. If you look at his huh. picture up a little bit higher, he has four or he has two quad barreled wrist mounted guns and artillery targeting lasers on the top of his armor. Oh shit, yeah, he does, doesn't he? Oh. I <laughs> I didn't stop and look at that picture, but yeah, he's uh yeah. Oof, he's well armed. He uh -huh. is well armed. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Jesus Christ. Uh are those Oh, okay, I, I I was I was a little confused at the uh, at the way the mini looked because I thought he was holding a gun, like I thought that was the quad barreled gun that's his hammer, and I was like, are those more guns on his shoulders? What the fuck? Yeah, he eventually does get the so the hammer. So I, I realize we're almost at an hour, and I still haven't gone to most of Perturabo. Um, all right, so so Har Harud fight over, uh, very angry Harud, like ooh, anger, anger. Um, I'm mad, and so the thing he did was he decided like, all right. Apparently, Olympia, my home planet, is currently having a rebellion because my foster dad is angry and he wants his power back from the Imperium. Okay. Uh, and I think he like straight up died. His foster dad just, just like dies down there. I don't. I don't even think he sees it. I think it's like off screen, so to speak. Oof. Um. But he gets down there, and oh man, is he mad? And he confronts his sister. <laughs> you know, his sister, the only person he was ever friends with. And his sister was like. Hey, Purdy, you a bitch. Oh, no. You 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 left us. Your ways suck. You suck. <laughs> All this stuff. 
And so Perturabo naturally was like, oh, that's unfortunate, foster sister. Hey, by the way, and just fucking strangles her to death. Oh. <laughs> because of course he does. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Damn. Because, you know, that's because uh... Perturabo. And then we, what he decided to do instead was like basically go door to door and kill everybody. Oh. Now, okay. granted, he, okay. he, he, was, he was not happy about killing her. He, uh -huh. he was upset that he did it because he kind of has this like, I'm super mad, I'm super mad, I'm super mad. And then when he's not mad, he's like, oh, man, what have I done? Oh, so he went into kind of like a fit of rage. Didn't he really, has fits of rage a lot. He wasn't really comprehending what he was doing. Yeah. And so yeah. he basically kind of went door to door on Olympia and killed like five million people and then took the rest of the slaves. And then he'd I like be basically how we just casually. Oh yeah, he went door to door, killed five million people. Eh, took some slaves. Like, damn. Ah, forty k. You know, numbers. <laughs> that's eh. true. That's true. That's true. He, so, so yeah, he basically did that. He took them all, a lot of slaves, and then he killed the rest. And this is when he had a pretty hefty moment of clarity. Oh, boy. He he kind of looked at there and he's like, "I am an awful person. Yeah. Oh my god." I am a like, even his his army, they were no longer the Iron Warriors, strength and iron. They were genocidal murderers, of of no purpose, yeah. of no like use. And so yeah. he, yeah. So he, but they had this pretty hefty moment of clarity. He was like, I, I hate who I am. I hate I hate what I've done. Oh my like oh my god! I'll never be forgiven for this. The Emperor will never, ever forgive me for what I've done. He might. Well... It's the Emperor. He might. You want to know someone who was like, I forgive you? Uh, let's see. Someone that would say they forgive him for, uh, just outlandish genocide and slave-taking? Um, I don't know. Someone from Chaos? Chaos God? Um... Um, oh shoot, the, who's the, who's the one that pushes everybody to chaos? It's, it's, it's all his fault. Shit, I forget what his name is. Um. Wait. So like... Oh, oh, no, no, not Erebus. Um, Erebus, I was... that's who I was thinking of. No, no, it was this man known as Horus. Uh -huh. Horus was like, Percherabo, <laughs> Percherabo, don't be upset. There is, like, there is nothing to be, uh, forgiven for. You did the right thing. I believe in you, my brother. <laughs> of course it would be Horus. I was and, on the right track. And then after that, Horus was like, I want you to spend some time with my buddy Erebus. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there There's he is. There's that <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> spend that, that some would... time with Erebus. Oh, spend God. some time with Erebus. And <sighs> in fact... Erebus. When the Horus heresy began, that made it a little bit more clear. You know, he was on Horus's side at this point. Yeah, definitely. He was down for that. He orchestrated almost the entire Dropside Massacre. Damn, did he? The Iron Warriors were a the majority of the force that did the killing. He okay. orchestrated, like, the kill boxes. He orchestrated the, the fortresses and the walls. Damn. He did most to all of that. Um, and that's and why they were going to the he, Eye of Terror with Fulgrim. Yeah, and to think, if the Emperor had just let him build the palace, none of this would happen. Well, and the Horus also... heresy is not even is probably not a, a, as big of a deal. I wouldn't quite say that. Uh, that the, the building of the palace was the turning point. There were many turning points with with Ben Percherabo over here, but no, it's it's fine. It's fine. I just want to make Biggie okay. seem like more of a fuck fuck up than. You know, I mean, he is kind of a fuck up. He's a big fuck up. Like he could have stopped every chaos primar from going chaos if he was just a halfway competent human being. Although I guess. <laughs> so, anyway. so uh, we don't talk much about Fulgrim yet, but Fulgrim has this funny knife. He got this little knifey boy, little, little shanky shaky bastard, mm -hmm. uh, and and little the little shanky bastard has a demon in it. Uh, which is one of the ways that Fulgrim kind of started becoming a problem. Uh, okay. But after Fulgrim killed Ferris Manus, his best bud, oh, um, Ferris Manus had a big-ass hammer 
And Horus was like, hey, Percherabo, you've been great to me. And you know what? You deserve this. So Percherabo's oh, cool. hammer is actually Ferris Manus's hammer. Is is there something special about Ferris Manus's hammer that makes it such a prize? Well, it's a pretty darn fucking good hammer. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, there's this thing called a demon in it. And there wasn't a demon in it before, but now there's a demon in it. Oh, great. Fun, fun. Yep. Fun, yep. fun. He's yep, got a demon in it. It's a very 40k thing to happen, sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's called the Was Forge it? Breaker. Ooh, that's a cool name for a hammer. Yeah, I like it's I like that. it's a neat one. Uh, but yep, it was basically the hey, you got the hammer, and so that started to kind of fuck up per Purdy's mind a little bit. Yeah, um, I imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then came the big fight that I got to be honest, I'm not fully fully remembering. This is very important fight between Percherabo and Fulgrim. And and they're bonking on each other and beating each other and going to town and Percherabo is really sad because he's like my brother, you're like my 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 best friend now. Come on, let's come on. There's, there's got to be some good in you still. And the demon in the in the sword is really fucking up full grim. He's like, oh god. And this is the point when Percherabo hits the bastard so goddamn hard that it like kills the mortal part of Fulgrim, I think. But then, Ooh. but then Snake Fulgrim becomes a thing. And then that's that's when oh. Fulgrim ascends into a demon Primarch. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the Fulgrim episode, I think. I think it's like a better time, personally. Yeah, for sure. I didn't realize that's how Snake Fulgrim became a thing. Is because Perturabo literally just hit him so hard with the hammer that his mortal part died and just all the chaos took oh, over. Oh, and... that's not quite true. That, 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 oh. I'm just saying, like, they had their big fight and this is when Fulgrim became Snake. Okay. Um, okay. There might, there's, there's like something else involving like a gem and like a shattered gem and some other weird stuff, but I'll get into that in the Fulgrim episode because it's more important mm. for Fulgrim. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, but that's the main like little part right before the Siege of Terra is in the Eye of Terror with him and Fulgrim. And then it basically came down to the Siege of Terra. We know what happens there. Uh, yeah. But he, Iron, or Percherabo, it's kind of funny. Percherabo was there and he's like, my warriors are now kind of demon infested like not his <laughs> actual like iron warrior warriors but he's fighting alongside demons and shit mm -hmm. and horus has got demons and shit and eventually Perturabo basically was seeing that his frontline combat troops were corn like berserkers yeah and he's just like i can't i can't command these fuckers <laughs> I, I they they just they just run forward what am i gonna do I mean, he's got all these all these issues. He doesn't know what he's doing, and he's upset that the sheer volume of demons. And so, what did what did Percherabo do? He destroyed and broke the Imperial Palace in like twenty three oh. spots. He created cool. like twenty three hole breaches, and, and and was able to break through the palace. And then he's like, "I win. Goodbye, Neener Neener." And then he withdrew all of his forces. Oh, did he really? I mean, I think it was after Horus died. Oh, okay. Uh, but he was like, I got it. I, I broke through Doran's defenses, get fucked, and then he left. <laughs> I was going to say, if, like, Horus was still, like, fighting Big E and he had broken through, it's like, keep going. Take the fucking palace. Break break it. Uh, yeah, and he, he did. He took so much pleasure in tearing down Doran's palace. He, he loved it, but at that point, he was like, I did what I need to do, bye! And so he what left. A, what a petulant man, child. <laughs> uh, but you, very you want, good at what he does! Oh, you want- he gets even more <laughs> petulance. Oh, no. Would you- would you like to- the, after that comes the Battle of the Iron Cage. Oh, alright. So what- Pertra, so Pertrabo <laughs> left, and then, like, Two days later, or something, like, really quickly after the, the he left, mm -hmm. he was like, hey, hey, Dorn, pussy, <laughs> I got this thing. It's called the Eternal Fortress. It's 20 square miles of fuckery. You won't fight me here. It's better than any of your buildings. <laughs> and he's like, come on, Dorn, fight me, bitch. Yeah, and Dorn uh, I, and Dorn was like, "Ooh, I'm so mad." 
Oh, well, I think, you know, he, Doran was like, I, if I could read, I would be angry. Yeah, I was going to say, it took two days because originally Perch Rob was sent a meanly written letter, but since Doran couldn't read it, he had to speak yeah, it at him. Yeah, he had to send him a he message. He had to yell at him, yeah. yeah. So he, Doran said he would dig Perch Rabo out of his hole and bring him back to Terra in an iron cage. Hence the name of the Iron Cage. Damn. Um, so Dorn himself and his Legion of the Imperial Fists went out to go attack the demon fortress known as the Eternal Fortress. The demonic, insane 20 square miles of bunkers, <laughs> towers, trenches, minefields, <laughs> tank traps, etc. That was intentionally made to look like the 8th Star of Chaos. Damn. Is there a picture of this thing anywhere? Did anybody do like an artist rendition of the uh, uh, Eternal, what, Eternal Fortress? Fortress? Eternal Fortress Cause, 40k. Because that's a... Uh... That's that's a that's a whopper. <laughs> this is the this is the closest I've got. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. That's, I I uh, think that's a, that's a that's a that's a that's a place. That I that's the best I got. I don't got much else. It's pretty cool. That's a, that's a good it, one. It's pretty neato. Yeah. Um. So he, yeah, he literally basically he literally said, "Come on, fight me. What are you a bitch?" bitch? <laughs> like that's. That's pretty much what he did. And and Dorn took the challenge. Mm -hmm. And he took the challenge. And <laughs> um <laughs> uh Dorn lived. Well, yeah, because I, I, I know who uh well actually, I mean Dorn lives for quite a while. Like Dorn didn't die. I mean, we talked about him in stuff that happens after this, so I know right. Dorn doesn't die there, but the Iron Warriors killed 78% of the Imperial Fists. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. 78% <laughs> of the Imperial Fist chapter. And, and not only that, but the Iron Warriors stole 400 of the Imperial Fist gene seed and Whoa. was then sacrificed to the ruinous powers of chaos. Ugh. Yikes. For the memes. The only reason Dorn did not die is because Gilliman came to save his life. And and Dorn was like Gilliman. Dorn was, was like, hey, what the fuck, you Boy Scout? Get out of here. This is my fight. And Gilliman's like, you can't even read. Get out. <laughs> You're going to die here. Are you are you a moron? And he would have. Unironically, Damn. if if uh, the Blueberry Boy Scouts did not show up, Dorn would have died as well, and the Imperial Fist chapter would have gone extinct. Wow. It took so 19 years for the Imperial Fist chapter to rebuild their forces. They were unable to fight Jesus. for 19 years. Ooh. So Percherabo really done fucked him up. He, like that was no joke. That that eternal fortress was no joke. That wasn't just like, oh, look at me boasting. It is that serious shit? He slapped his man titties up and down. There was no <laughs> stopping him. Damn. And Dorn, it's not like Dorn is some like little mamby pamby baby that can't hold his own in a fight. It's not like the Imperial Fists are weak little babbers. Like, he that's... literally killed Alpharius. Yeah. That's a, that's all. That's a big like deal. Like I said, like I said, this is the this yeah. is the fucking God is cringe asshole, but he he <laughs> can back it up. I love that. I love that the description of Perch Rob was he's the the God is the God is dead. God is useless. God is cringe asshole. I like that. I like that. That's what he is. He is so <laughs> fucking is good at his job, and he's such a petulant man child. <laughs> Well, in so fact, does... I almost, I almost think I like him more. Oh, okay, After... I like him. I like him less, and I like him more. I, I think from what I've heard so far, I like him significantly more. I mean, all, all I had heard about him was, oh, he's a petulant man child. But after this episode, it's like, yeah, but man, is he a badass though? Like, you don't tangle with Percherabo. Like, you just, you, you don't. You're gonna get, you're gonna get fucked up. 
he's just he's so like I I think I hate him <laughs> for his personality. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I hate him for that, but he's but he's like I, I it's nice that there is a Primark that I can both hate and respect. You know? Yeah. Like I kind of need I think that oh, there's too many of them that are just like the perfect perfect boys and have a few yeah, character man. flaws, but his character yeah. flaws are like crippling. Yeah, that is that is true. So, uh is the Eternal Fortress <laughs> still around? Is, what it, is, is it this? still What is this shy? Dare you attack my newest demonic fortress of perpetual pain? Even I don't know how to get inside this one. <laughs> um, the yeah. Eternal Fortress, I don't know. I think I think it's still around, yeah. Okay. I was gonna say if Dorn and the Imperial Fist couldn't get through it, I mean who is? Like you'd have to you'd have to stage like a multi chapter assault on that place, right? Like you couldn't send just one group in there to hopefully maybe uh get rid of it. I think so. I I know that yeah, it would take a lot. I know that they all kind of left. I think they actually maybe just dipped. Because they decided instead oh. to secure a demon world in the eye of in the eye of terror called Medringard. And <laughs> it's a demonic fortress world uh, where all of the Iron Warriors rule over a slave population from their giant citadels of iron and stone. And they spend wow. the entire time blowing each other up and practicing siege drills. Okay. Um, and I and Perturabo since then is I believe he's now a demon primarch, which I don't think he likes at oh. all. Um it's kinda like Mortarian. Mm -hmm. But at the moment he's I think he's in his attic. <laughs> he's finally able to just do just sketch and noodle and, and build I, his yeah. little logs. Yeah. But I think I think because of the nature of the long war of Chaos versus Imperium, he could never really get much respite. But oh, I, I, I think he's I think he's finally in his attic making Lincoln logs. Yeah. How, but I, I well he's good for him. He's a demon he's demon Primarch now though, so perhaps he isn't because oh, he's insane yeah. now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um but yeah, people do say he looks like no one knows what he looks like. We actually really? don't have a look of him. Oh, you mean as a demon Primarch, nobody knows what he looks like? Yeah, so, for example, uh, this is an obliterator. Remember the obliterator I mentioned earlier? Yeah. This is an obliterator. So they kind of, like, hulk out and, and grow, like, guns and weird shit on them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about these before. They were the ones that had the the, the, the thighs. Yeah, yeah. So right, it's, a, right, it's right. assumed that he just looks like a gigantic obliterator with that badass mask you see in the picture above. Ooh, that'd be that'd be cool, and that would make sense because he's it has the arm cannons, it has the shoulder mounted whatevers. That would make sense for him yeah. to be an obliterator, just like a really buff ass demon primarch obliterator. That'd be a very cool thing too, very cool mini to make. <coughs> for like Games Workshop, <coughs> ah. like, like here's an Iron Warrior obliterator with some Iron Warrior troops. Whoa, like they're <laughs> they're what? really. They're cool, man. Obliterators Whoa. are nuts. Oh, that thing is crazy. Damn. Yeah. There is some pretty neat things. Like I said, the I think the Iron Warriors are way more badass than the than Bertrabo, at least in terms of like <laughs> likability. Yeah. Um That's that's but, not an actual mini yeah. you could put on the field, is it? That that thing? Uh, the idea of the obliterator is that there's not like a stock way they get all weird and grow weird shit. It's all just random. So oh, the minis okay. have their own way, and then there's like that's a, va a variant you could say. Okay, cool, cool. Damn. Yeah, Iron Warriors are pretty cool. That's 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 yeah. that's pretty sick. That's mm. yeah. I think I like Petrabo a lot more. But ever <laughs> ever since he, uh, it was like, oh yeah, he just wants to draw i keep thinking of i don't know if you've seen the meme about like the uh, art university commercial where it has this guy in like this like green sweater vest and he just very awkwardly looks at the camera's like do you like to draw or maybe even sketch and doodle um i have this... not seen that <laughs> and he, he says it just like that and I, it always cracked me up because and then he's like oh just take our art test and he's just this really goofy looking fucker 
Um, now that's that's how I imagine Perturabo is just trying to get people to sketch and doodle. Yeah. Sketch and doodle. Do you like to draw or maybe even sketch and doodle? I mean, he wants to sketch and doodle, but I think he that does. maybe the demon presence and his uh, sons all wanting to blow stuff up maybe takes it away. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Percherabo! Percherabo! I like him a lot more. I I, I think he's pretty dope. Uh, he he, might, he cool might be a bit of a petulant. Ways. He might be a bit of a petulant man child, but I think he's just he's, he's too badass not to like because of his shit personality. He. His shit personality, I, I don't know. I don't think I like Percherabo, not gonna lie. Okay. Um, but I I appreciate him. I can respect what he does. I I can't unlive that that conversation with the priest, man. It <laughs> God, actually it I when I was listening to it, it actually made me cringe. Like in real life, it made me cringe. It felt so I'm 14 and this is deep. I, I hated it. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go on the limb and say I like Pertrabo. I All like right. Pertrabo now. Fair enough. If I can get you to like Gilliman, I can get you to like anybody. That's fair. Well, Gilliman I only like because his his story turns very tragic. Like if Gilliman had just stayed like, oh look at me, I'm an ultramarine and I'm perfect, <laughs> I would have hated him. But now that he's sort of tragically in a world that he wants to fix, but he can't, now he's just sort of stuck suffering under everything that the Emperor was like, no, don't do that. That's that's a cool plot twist. That makes him kind of dope to me. Having <laughs> ultra depression is most definitely very very good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, Perturabo Iron Warriors. You know, I've called Perturabo a, a petulant manchild for a while now. I can and confirm he, is. he still <laughs> absolutely is. Yeah. But he's pretty cool. Not gonna yep. lie. Very cool. He cool is pretty iron. cool. Good old Bo. <laughs> Good old Purdy Dalmatian. Yeah, see, see, there, there's, there's all the, there's all the memes that that Shy is posting, and I think I, oh, I no. get the memes now. They are a combination of both ironic and truthful. It is Perturabo <laughs> is in fact, it's he's ironically Sigma male memes, but at the same time, yeah, you know, he does all right. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> yellow boy man. <laughs> I I like the fact that he he actually said, "Fight me, bitch. Here's my fortress. You can't crack it." And he was right. He was so right too. He Holy was shit! So right. <laughs> he he talks the talk, but he walks the walk too. Which I think I think that's why I like him, right? Because he he backs his shit talking up. I'm gonna raise no fool, although he didn't really have a mom per se, I guess. No, he just had a foster dad mainly. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Purdy boy, Percherabo. Thank you everyone for, for listening slash watching. Next week we'll be on the Iron Warriors in general. My name has been Bricky. God is cringe. You can find me at Bricky everywhere. This is gonna be our new meme. Like how Lowell said Karn the Betrayer and Lamau. It's just going to be like, God is cringe, Percherabo. I don't know why, no matter how many times you said it this episode, every time you said God is cringe, I could not help but just be like, floored like, by amusement. I am I am not a religious person. I you could, probably call, you could probably call me an atheist, but it was so cringy to listen to him debate about the existence of God. I'm, I couldn't handle it. It was so <laughs> tough to listen to. All right. God damn it. I wonder how many people it. are going to buy that book just so that they can see that section and be like, oh, wow, yeah, that is super. Oh, God, Bricky's right. That's mega cringe. Holy shit. <laughs> Extreme cringe. Anywho, <laughs> um, thank you, everyone, for listening. Bricky, uh, you can find Shy, Quite Shallow, Quite Shy, etc. We're actually doing streams at twitch.tv. So it's ridiculous. Whoop, whoop, dig it. Dig it in, Monty's everywhere. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's the stuff with the thing. Let's it's, go. It's Iron episode. within. God is cringe. Iron within. <laughs> God is cringe. <laughs> Iron within. God is cringe. It kind of rhymes. I know. <laughs>